So we're going to, I do this quite a bit back home, sort of a lazy man's talk, you see. Um, so we're going to sing a song, you will know this song, you'll have all heard it. It's by a man named Bob Bennett, and you will know this song. If you don't, then you won't. Yes. And it's the title of the talk, the song's called The Best. about this year, but it's been the best year there ever was. Why? Because we're still here, walking with the Lord, rejoicing with the Lord. It is the best. And uh, I think um, sometimes, and we've heard a little bit about that uh, in the talks that we've had so far at camp, 
is the world is trying to tell us that what we have isn't all that great. It's not all that good. But uh, as we come to a place like camp, we're reminded that what we have in the Lord and with the Lord is the very best there is. There is nothing else better. And we believe that. Amen? Amen. We believe that. So I want to look at some scriptures tonight just to talk a little bit about that. Um, just go to Psalm 39 if you can, just really quickly. Um, don't want to be up here for long, so we'll just do this here. Um, Psalm 39 verse 5, it says, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth. Saw a little bit this morning, might even be electrical plug. That might be our, our life. And my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Have a think about that. That's what Salah means. So what the Lord is telling us here is your very best actually isn't good enough. And praise the Lord for that. It's actually not, not that fantastic. It's actually vain. It's vanity. The very best you can do. You know, we might have some people in this room, they can do some amazing things in this room. Amazing things. I myself, I'm the 1987 hide and seek world champion. <laughs> Still looking for me. <laughs> people in this room have done some amazing things, but in the sight of what God has done for us, it means nada, nothing. It's vanity. And uh, it goes on and says, Surely every man walks in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knows not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. When we were born again, and the hope of God was installed in us, that is exactly what we were waiting for. That was the very, very best that God saved for us. You know, in that song there, it talks about the best thing that we can ever tell someone is that they can come to know Jesus Christ through the born-again experience. And He wants, as it says in John 14, He wants to come and dwell in them. That is the best thing we can ever say. To go out and talk to someone and say, you can be healed. There is no better counsel than that. There's no prescription that can beat that. There's no, there's no counsellor that can out-counsel the Word of God. And when we take it into positions out there in the world where God can be effective in people's life. I wanted to share a little testimony that happened a couple of years ago in Wellington. Uh, we had uh, uh, an outreach and, and um, uh, as part of the outreach we, we got at one of our young brother's testimony, young Wyatt. Um, as many of you know, he was deaf when he was born and, and God healed him. And we put his testimony and we proudly thought, this is the best. We're going to show off the handiwork of our God. And, and we came under attack. We were attacked in the street. We had people yelling and screaming at us and telling you can't say that. You can't do that. And then we got attacked on social media. And we had a, 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 a lady just down the road from here, actually, who attacked us on, on social media. And she said, I'm a lawyer, and you better take that down. And that's not true. And by the way, my son's deaf. How dare you? How dare you say that my son can be healed? How dare you say that this young boy has been healed? How dare you? And she, she went me. Um, and that's cool. We, we can handle that. We've, we've, got, we've got big shoulders. It's all good. Praise the Lord. And um, I got talking to one of the brothers um, uh, in the fellowship and he he actually knew this particular lady and he purposely went round and put one of these pamphlets in her letterbox <laughs> because he knew that his, his, her son was deaf and he, he wanted to bring hope to her and she reacted the way she did and we were like, oh yeah, praise the Lord, that's great. And then we were on our first Samoa trip in 2018 and we were sitting there one night and I got a text through. From, from the brother, saying, you're not going to believe what's happened. I said, what? This lady's son has been healed. 
We told her that we would pray for her son, because that's all we had, right? She came at us with what she thought was her best. I'm a lawyer, I know how this works, you can't do this, there's litigation, there's blah, 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 blah. And we just said, your son can be healed, we will pray for your son. And she said, she had a comment there saying, yeah, you go and see what your God can do. Her son was healed. And it was, it was an amazing testimony. We delivered the very, or our brother delivered the best he could for this person. They reacted in the absolute, you know, the worst way in a sense. But God still gave his very best to this particular person. And it was just an amazing circumstance. And I remember being in Samoa, and, and that was different because it was new, and, and, and uh, we didn't speak the language, and we, and we didn't look like everyone else, and we were just out there trying to take the best out. And that really buoyed us. We were like, yes, this is the best. What we are taking out is what the Lord has given us, and this is the answer it's the very, very best. And, um, and I think this is what it's saying here to us, is that now our hope is in God. And you can't do any better than that. You're not going to attain anything more than that. And for us, sometimes I think we just, we, we get distracted a bit. We've heard a bit about that, don't we? We get distracted about where our hope is. And we forget that we've been given the very best. The very best that God could give, He gave in the form of His Son. The scriptures tell us that in John 3.16, we see that quoted all over the place. That he gave his only son to save the world, to reconcile man to God, to choose us. So we, we have the very best. Um, I just want to, just, just really quickly, um, let's go to um, uh, Luke 10. Just, just really quick, I've got a few scriptures here, but I'll cut half of them out because we don't need them. Luke 10. Um, uh, another really good passage I've touched on a little bit of on this lately back home um, well, there's a saying that goes around is if you want to if you want to be the best then you've got to work with the best you've got to rub shoulders with the best if you want to be the best and you, you, you see that particularly in the in the corporate world or in the in the sports world they bring in the best if you want to be the best you have to have the best with you and folks, we've got the very best in us. It doesn't get any better than the Holy Ghost residing in us. And um, Jesus here, is, he's always trying to, to highlight a, a, a point for us. And in, in um, Luke 10, verse 38, we'll just quickly read this here. It says, Now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received them into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who was at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much, with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, um, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And, she, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are careful, you're anxious, you're troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, one thing is important, one thing is the best. And Mary has chosen that, which shall not be taken away from her. And folks, oh, I just really want to highlight the great choices that you've made this year. To have that time of prayer, to, to zoom in when you were still in your jammies, <laughs> to, to get to the meeting, to make it an absolute priority in your life. You've chosen the very best, and that will never be taken away from you. If you maintain that way of thinking, that I have the best, I need to be with the best, I want to be encouraged by the very best, it's going to drive your walk forward. And you're going to walk into situations, and you're going to see the Lord do things, and you're going to go, you can't tell me the Lord wasn't involved in that. Mm -hmm. It's the very, very best we've been given. And it's such it's such an honour for us to, to, to have that. Um, Oh, I've just got a couple of things here. Uh, let's just, I'll take you to Second Kings. There's a couple of little stories here, just a couple of my faves. Quite, quite like turning to them. So when we go out and we take the gospel out and we're ready to give an answer to every man, often we think, I haven't got the right thing to say. I don't know what to say to this person. But the Lord has actually given you the best things to say. 
in our testimony. Our testimonies are so powerful. They're, they're, they are almost unbelievable in the sight of the world. They almost can't believe the things that God has done in your life. It's the very best. You know, and it's not something like when you used to go around to your Aunt Maud's place and she'd have the very best china that she'd never bring out. You know, oh, don't touch that, kids. That only comes out. Never. never. <laughs> You've got an Aunt Maud. Excellent. <laughs> Yet they never come out. We take our best and we just put it on display and we've got people here, hey, touch it, feel it, get involved in it. We invite people. When you invite someone to a Holy Ghost meeting, you're asking them to come to the best thing they've ever probably stepped foot into in their life. It's such an honour to have these things at our disposal and, and, and at the same time a great responsibility for us as well uh, and encouragement. But I just want to read a couple of things here about just how, how the best is God. There's some good English for you. Um, just, uh, let's just look in verse, in verse 8. Um, there's a situation here, uh, I will read it. it, says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel uh, with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Uh, sorry, 2 Kings 6, 8. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the, the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place, uh, uh, sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once, nor twice. Oh, so how many times? Thrice. But, uh, I think the point is there that it happened time and time and time and time again. We see the situation here where God's feeding the inside word through the prophet here to the king. How often have you had the inside word? How often is the very best our God can get into a situation and he can give you the heads up? He can arm you in a way that you never thought you could and you can avoid things. You can sometimes walk into it and be victorious and all sorts of things here. God goes before us It goes and it says, Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which, which of us is for the king of Israel? Now they, they thought it was someone that was an inside job here. Someone's, someone's tipping them off. Who, what's going on here? This is how good God is. The enemy gets confused. They can't believe that you, we have an answer to these things. And it says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that, they, that you speak in your bedchamber. <laughs> That's not a bad person to have on your side. God sees around corners. He knows the future. He knows what you need. And he's prepared and he has already given you his very best. That's why the scriptures tell us, by his stripes, you are healed. You've already been, we've got the best. It's so, it's so awful. Verse 13, it says, And he said, Go and spy where he is, and I have sent and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. And then it says, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And again, this is a real type for us in our, in our own lives. Is that God works with us and he, you, you, know, you go to a meeting and then all of a sudden the spiritual gifts just and there's one just for you. And the Lord's in the bedchamber of the enemy and he's given you the answer before you go out. And you go out that week and go, oh, praise the Lord. He's working for me and with me. This is fantastic. And then all of a sudden, it comes against you. And you see the chariots on the horizon. You see the situation coming sometimes. And as you see here, you pull back the curtains and the host of the enemy is right there. And uh, at times you can have that attitude, uh-oh, how shall we do how are we going to get out of this one? How are we going to deal with this? And Elisha here understood that the best of the best was working with him. And you see that time and time again in his ministry. And he, just a fearless guy, Elisha, it's, it's, he's, a, he's a really amazing guy. And it says, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 
It's just such a wonderful statement. And then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. He wanted this young man to say, hey, the best is with us. God is with us. He's not with them. He's with us. Lord, help him to see. Help him to see what he's got. So that he can go out and he can go forward. And he can walk out in victory and know that, that the things that he faces in his life, that he's got God with him. The best is working with him. And we know there's a wonderful um, story. I won't read the rest of it, but the Lord wins the day, as he always does. Um, and so the Lord teaches us that he is the best. And what he's done for us and how he's rescued us and how he's going to continue to, to uh, secure us in his household, um, there's no beating it. Um, just want to, um, just two scriptures just to finish. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. I'm not going to read all of it. It's a great one. Homework if you haven't read it. It's... Fantastic. But just want to just pick up some of this here. Uh, verse 33, I'm just going to rip through this. It says, Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, uh, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better res resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. The Old Testament warriors that we've just read about, they did this through faith, which is a, an amazing thing. But then it goes on and says in verse 40, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So the Lord is telling us here that we're living in a time where we've been given everything we need. From God the Father himself. He sent his son to die for us. So that we could have the best in our life. You might feel like. Oh it's tough sometimes. I'm, I'm struggling. You've still got the best. Perhaps. You just need to open your eyes. Or have your eyes open. Perhaps is a better way. Just Lord show me. Let me see what you're doing in my life. And, and that my answer is already here. It's an amazing thing. Better promises are here for us now. We are living in an age, and we could read other scriptures, where these people desire to see and be involved in the things that we are, we are today. Um, and so we are in the time of the very best. Let's finish in Titus 3. But just... Again, want a, a really, a really awesome passage here. It says in verse three, Titus three three, it says, "For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, we were disobedient, we were deceived, we served different lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another." So that's all the vain part. Right? So it had nothing to do with our ability, our works what we looked like, how we dressed, all those sorts of things. Nothing nothing counted for anything. But after that, <laughs> the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, toward man appeared. And he appears for all of us. He comes uh, to us in the form of the Holy Ghost. And he comes to be with us. That's, that's such a powerful thought that Jesus Christ has come with us. He's, he's right here. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The born again experience created this situation where we could live with the Saviour, which he shared on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. It just does not get any better than that. If there's an inheritance to seek after, if there's something to, to set your sights on in this life, set your sights on work, walking with the Lord and, and sticking with Him and, and tying yourself to the Lord in hope and in faith. And as you do that, you'll be made heirs. And when you start, as you go on in the Lord, you start to understand a little bit more about what that means, about being an heir, about being a son or a daughter of God, someone who, who is going to inherit an absolute fortune. And the Lord gives us a down payment now, the Scriptures tell us, in the form of the Holy Ghost. We have the very best in our life. And so my encouragement tonight for us is as God gave his best for us, we should, we should use that. I remember a sister um, who's asleep in the Lord now, um, she used to say, never ever let one drop of the Lord's blood go to waste. Use the best in your life. Um, preach the best. Go out in confidence and know when you take the word of God out, there is nothing better you could have said to that person. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.